Welcome back. It's been an exciting journey as we teach about making destiny decisions because we discover the Bible says multitude, multitude in the valley of decision. We discover you're free to make any decision, but you are not free from the consequences of the decision. We discovered last week, especially five biblical rewards to God's leading from Psalm 23, from verse 1 to the end. We discover Psalm 23, verse 1, the first thing that happens when you allow God to lead you and not your mind and not just your sins and not your environment is that you will prosper. The Bible says in Psalm 23 verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I, mean, I love that in the Passion Translation. He says the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd and we have more than enough. Very awesome. So the first thing that happens when we follow God's leading is prosperity. The second one is peace verse 2 of Psalm 23 it says it makes me to lie down in green pastures it leaves me by the side of still waters that is very important it makes me to lie by green pastures and it leads me by still waters that is peace God wants you to have peace as allow God to lead you the first thing you prosper the second thing you have peace verse 3 move us to the third one which is restoration he said he restores my soul it leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake the third one is restoration Restoration. So when you walk with God, something three verse one is your best friend and your shepherd. Then the Bible said you will prosper. You will have more than you need. Then he said in verse 2 that he's going to lead you by still waters. He's going to lead you by the green grass. That is peace. Then number 3 is a restoration. He said he restores my soul. I don't know what the devil has stolen in your life. I command restoration to you in the name of Jesus. All you have lost is coming back to you. The Bible says in Genesis 42 and verse 28 he said oh my money is restored and lo it's in my bag and I prophesy to you right now that your money is restored and it's in your bag I want you to look around you and confess that and say my money is restored somebody type it type it type it Genesis 42 verse 28 type my money is restored somebody open your mouth a closed mouth is a closed destiny shout my money is restored if you can't move your mouth you can't move your mountain shout my money is restored but not only money can be restored, time can be restored. In Joel chapter 2 and verse number 25, he shall be restored unto you the years that the Pama woman, the Kam Kam woman said it. I want you to shout to yourself, my time is being restored. I don't know what you've lost, it's coming back to you. The time you lost, right in that exam, the time you lost in that wrong relationship, God is a restorer of time and I decree and declare it's coming back to you. So somebody shout my money is restored and my time is restored type it type it type it now in the comment section that my money is restored and my time is restored so Psalm 23 verse 1 he told us God gives us prosperity verse 2 when we follow his leading we have peace verse 3 when we follow his leading we have we have restoration verse 4 he said yeah do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for your rod and your staff they comfort me that is protection so not only what do we have prosperity, peace, restoration. We have protection when we have his leading. And finally, verse 5, he told us we have provision when we follow the leading of God. Psalm 23, verse 5, he said, God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy and he anoints my head with oil and my cup runneth over and I prophesy to him your cup is running over in the name of Jesus. Then verse 6 rounds it up. He said if you will allow these things to follow you. Number 1 verse 1 said you get prosperity verse 2. You get peace verse 3 you get restoration. Verse 4 he said you get protection. Verse 5 he said you have provision. Then verse 6 said if you follow God's leading and all these five is working in your life then surely somebody shout surely. Somebody type surely. I love surely. It is not maybe maybe not. It is not paradventure. No, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. I have the news for you. There is no cause for my father's side following me. There is no cause for my mother's side following me. There is no cause for Nigeria following me. What is following me is Mr. Goodness and Mr. Mercy. When you see me, goodness and mercy is with me. When you see me talking to my wife, it's with goodness and mercy. 
when I go for that interview, have the embracing for that job. I've gone with the goodness of mercy. Be conscious of goodness and mercy. Don't be conscious of the enemy. Don't be conscious of the devil. Be conscious of goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever in the name of Jesus. Today, I will not want to go into the nitty gritty how God leads. I've talked about the rewards of God's leading. How does God really lead us? I'm going to lay three foundations. Then I'm going to tell you seven ways he used to lead. Then we'll move into how he leads now. The first foundation I'm going to lay is that God always loved to lead us. God had always loved to leave men, lead men. God and will not leave us without direction. He wants to lead us. In fact, God desires to lead us more than we desire to be led. In Job 33 verse 14, down to verse 18, we see Job explaining that. Look at it, Job 33 from verse 14. He said, God will speak once and we speak twice. But if man does not perceive, then he will come in a, in a dream. Then he will come in a vision of the night when a man is a slave, when he's slumbering, when he's not too distracted. So God is trying to speak to you. He speaks once, he speaks twice, yet you are not perceiving it. You are not getting what God is saying. He will be patient with you. He will wait for you to sleep. Then he will send you a dream. He will send you a vision of the night when you are sleeping, when you are not distracted. Then verse 16 says, it will open your ear and seal it with instruction that man will withdraw his, from his purpose and hide his pride from man. He keepeth his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Did you see that? God knows that if you don't get his direction, you can perish by the sword. God knows if you don't get direction, you can enter into a pit. So what does he do? He tries to talk to your account of verse 14, Job 33, once, twice. If you don't get that, then it will come in your dream. It will give you a dream in the vision of the night while you're slumbering. Then it will open your ears and seal the instruction there because it does not want you to lose your purpose and lose your destiny. So number one thing I want you to know in laying the foundation of how God leads is that God desires to lead you. Number two, kicking against that leading is dangerous. Remember that Job 33 we just read in verse 18. He says he's doing all he's doing in verse 17. He says so that I can withdraw you from your own thoughts and purpose and hide your pride so that I can keep your soul from the pain and your life from perishing by this world. So God is leading you for number two so that you, so that you will not go in a dangerous way. That is why Psalm 32 verse 8 is how I instruct you I'll teach you the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. Is that not awesome? He said, I will instruct you. I'll teach you the way you should go. But I would even allow you to go alone. I'll guide you all the way. I don't know if you know about GPS. When you're using your GPS and you type where you're going and your car is driving, it's giving you direction because there's a satellite in the sky that is guiding you with his eyes, seeing where you're going. That is why when you take a wrong turn, he will say, recalculating route. Your God is doing the same with you, he's following you, he's guiding you, he's checking you out to be sure you're doing it right. He said, I'll instruct you in the way you should go, I'll guide you with my eyes. But verse 19, verse 9, Psalm 32, verse 9, he now gave us a warning. Don't be like a horse or a mule that refuse to have understanding, that we have to put something in their mouth to control them. Don't be like that. Don't be like that animal that we have to put something in their mouth to control them because they won't listen. That is why in Acts chapter 9 and verse 5, Jesus appeared to Saul on the road to Damascus. Saul did not believe in Jesus. He thought he was a crook that was killed. So anybody that believed in Jesus, he was going with zeal to kill them. But when he had an encounter with Jesus and Jesus called him Saul, 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 why are you persecuting me? Let me use that to sound a warning. If you are persecuting a believer, you are persecuting Jesus because we are part of his body. We are part of his life. He didn't say, why are you persecuting my people? He didn't say, why are you persecuting my church? He said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul replied, who are you, Lord? 
Lord. Can you imagine first encounter he knew his Lord. He was arguing it before. He was killing before. That is why I've always known when when somebody have an encounter with God, everything around them change. Who are you, Lord? And then the Lord said, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. But look at the next few words. Why are you kicking your leg against the prick? Why are you kicking your leg against the prick? What is a prick? A prick is a stick that they use to guide the leg of a horse or a mule when they're directing it. So when they want it to move left, they kick it so I can move left. When they want it to go right, they use the prick to eat it so the legs I can go right. But sometimes some of these moves are stuck. And they will, when the brick is hitting them, they are kicking back. They are kicking back, and the owner will still keep on kicking, and they will be kicking back because the owner says, "This is where we need to go. That place is safe. Where you want to go is not safe." But the moon is struggling, or the donkey is struggling. But the man that knows the direction will use the brick to be beating the leg. That is what God was saying to Saul. He was saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you kicking against the brick? The meaning of that, why are you kicking against my direction for your life? I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. I'm trying to lead you in that purpose. You have zeal, but without sense. I am speaking to somebody right now. Why are you kicking against the brick? Concerning who to marry, concerning your business, concerning your ministry, concerning where to live. Many a times, I must tell you the truth. Many a times we struggle with God. It was like when we were trying to start the church right there where I came in Toronto. I didn't want to stay. I just wanted to do the background and escape quickly. I had plans. I wanted to go uh, to travel to Austria, to travel to Switzerland, to travel to Italy, to travel to 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 Ireland, I wanted to go. Oh my God, several places we have planned. I had a meeting in Manchester, I had a meeting in Glasgow. It was all planned. So I was like, well, I'll just dash it, do the background work, and escape and leave the people to do it. I knew God wanted me to do it, but I wasn't ready. You know what happened? I was trying to kick my leg against the brake, and in the midst of that, then lockdown came. COVID 19 lockdown. I got locked down here. So what am I doing now? I'm doing what God wants me to do. Why do we wait until lockdown happens before we obey God? I know you're laughing at me. Oh, it's your home will soon come. I know you too. I know. I know you too. You're kicking your leg against the prey. Why are you kicking against the prey? Why are you kicking against the direction of God for your life? So number one, God wants to lead us. Number two, when you don't respond to leading, it's dangerous. Number three. Though God's leading is always constant, the way he leads changes from time to time. Let me say that again. Though the leading of God is always constant, but the way he leads changes from time to time. Somebody say, Reverend, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, that's Hebrews 38. And I agree with you, but I also need to tell you that though God is the same, but his expression changes from time to time. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3 proves that to us. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, he said, God, what various times? times and various ways spoken in time past for our fathers through the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son who he has appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the world who bring the brightness of the glory express image of his person he uphold all things by the word of his power i love that but listen he said god who at various times and in various ways spoke various times various ways <laughs> God, who at various times and in various ways. You know, there is a controversy about who wrote the book of Hebrews. And um, no, I, I'm, I'm sure it's Paul. If you look, look at the star, it's Paul. If you look at the revelation, it's Paul. If you look, um, in fact, the man of God, can I see again? He said, when he had a visitation of Jesus, he asked Jesus, who wrote the book of Hebrews? And God, Jesus said to him, 
Paul did. But the, one of the reasons why there are doubts is because every book Paul wrote, the first verse of every book, go and read it, go and read it, Philippians, Colossians, every book he wrote, the first thing that we say is that is we had Paul there. He started off with I Paul, but Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, he didn't even mention his name at all. If I didn't mention his name throughout the book, he just started by saying Hebrews 1, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to our fathers through the prophet. He was in a hurry to explain this to you, that God in various times and in various ways. So what I'm going to do today and the way time is going, I think I'll have to do it, continue it next week. Today and next week is to teach you how God speaks at various times and in various ways. Various times and various ways. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke to our fathers through the prophet, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he had appointed, he had of all things, and by whom also he made the world. So you need to understand that God speaks at different times in different ways. In this same time, he speaks to us by his spirit more. John chapter 16, verse 13. 13 John 16, 13. He said, I'll be healed. When the spirit of truth is come, he'll guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whosoever he shall hear, he shall speak. And he will show you things to come. He is talking about the spirit. So in the end time, he will speak to us by his son and by his spirit. The message translation of that John chapter 16, verse 13. He said, but when the friend, he's talking about the other spirit, when the friend, the spirit of the truth he will take you by the hand and guide you into all the truth there is he won't draw attention to himself but will make sense out of what is about to happen and indeed out of all i have done and said my god that is deep i don't have time to explain that so you need to understand that god at various times speaks in various ways he said in various times he spoke to us by his prophet but in this last time he's going to be speak by his son and his spirit and in john 16 13 the message translation Jesus said, when that spirit, the friend comes, it's going to be the spirit of truth. It will take you by the hand. It will guide you to all truth there is. Truth about who to marry, truth about where to go. Not only that, it won't draw attention to himself. It will make sense of what is about to happen. So we understand, okay, this is why COVID is happening. Okay, this is why I didn't marry Zube. Okay, this is why uh, God did not allow me to marry brother Zobo Zobo. And now understanding. Then he said, we make sense of what we hear about and indeed of all that I've done and said. So God in various ways, in various times, speaks in various ways. So let me mention a few ways by which he used to speak. If you don't finish this, we'll continue next week and then we'll round up on this segment, then we move on to God's navigation system, how God leads in the New Testament, how you and I can be sure we are being led of the Spirit about who to marry, about what work to do about where to live, about where to do ministry. But let, don't let us be too far ahead of our time. Let's talk about how God used to live. Number one, the Bible said he used to live by the prophets. Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, he said God in various ways and in various times and various ways used to speak to us by the prophet. Yeah, the ministry of the prophet. In the Old Testament it was for direction. Though in the New Testament it's only for confirmation. They are not meant to direct you. You need to understand that in the New Testament we are directed by spirit. But but in the Old Testament, yeah, we were directed by the prophets in the Old Testament. For example, in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 6, the Bible said they were looking, Saul uh, and, and, and the servant, they were looking, they were looking for asses that were lost. And when they've looked and looked and looked, they were tired. And then the servant said, excuse me, sir, why are we wasting time looking for these asses? He said, there is a man of God in this city and he's an honorable man. I love that. I love the fact that a man of God is meant to be an honorable man. It's sad that we live in a journey generation that not all men of God are honorable but I love the fact he said this man of God is an honorable man this man of God is an honorable man come on beat your chest and say I am honorable I am honorable this man of God is an honorable man and all he says come to pass let's go there for adventure he will be able to tell us where to go so you see in the Old Testament when they're confused when they don't don't know where to go when they don't know what to do they seek the ministry of a prophet that is why in second kings 3 verse 11 second kings chapter 3 
And verse 11, three kings wanted to go to war. And one of them said, excuse me, this is what we are going to. Will we come back? And then the other one said, I don't, we don't know. These kings are not going with you. You're going to war. You don't know if you come back. How dumb can you be? Is there no prophet here that can tell us if we can come back? Then Joseph had said, there is not here a prophet in the Lord. There we inquire of him by him. And one of the king of Israel's servant answered and said, there is Elisha, the son of Shepherd, which poured water into the hands of Elijah. There are two things I noticed there. Number one, he says, there are no prophet. Then one guy said, well, there is a guy called Elisha, the son of Shaphet. I'm not sure if he's a prophet, too, but I know he used to pour water into the hands of Elijah. So I discover the anointing you serve is the anointing that is replicated in your life because he served Elijah. Everybody knew. They said he used to pour water. As far as they are concerned, that is all there is to him. He was just pouring water. But can you imagine Imagine he that was just pouring water is the one that carries the anointing. Remember, later on, the Bible said these other sons of the prophet, they said, Surely the anointing of Elijah don't rest on Elisha. If God has given you a privilege to serve, serve in the place of the servant, your anointing is abounding, your anointing is increasing. So that is why, number one, they go to the prophet for direction. Number two is very funny. They cast lot. <laughs> oh, interesting. So, if there is no prophet around that they can consult, then they, it's like throwing dice, but they didn't have theirs in those days. I guess I learned the way they used to do it. They would take different kind of straws, they would put it together, they would put it down, then somebody would close his eyes and they would say, The one I pick, the one I pick is the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what they do. So when there is no prophet, that's what they do. They will throw dice. All over the Bible, there are examples of that. Just like there are too many examples of them being led by the prophet, there are too many examples of them throwing dice. Let me show you one or two. In 1 Samuel 14, verse 41, 1 Samuel 14 and verse 41, Therefore Saul said unto the Lord God of Israel, Give a perfect lot. And Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. And Saul said, Cast lots between me and Jonathan, my son. And Jonathan was taken. What happened? Saul said, No. Nobody must eat anything until we win this war. Nobody. But that was not the plan of God. That was just the thinking of Saul. That is why some of you, you think, hey, if I, if I if, and that might not be what God is saying. Actually, obedience is better than sacrifice. So he was meant to just obey God, but he was trying to do sacrifice or fasting. But Jonathan didn't hear when he made that proclamation. So Jonathan was fighting. Then he saw honey. Honey. Ah! Mm, he put his hand there and lick it. And as he licked the only power, energy, strength came and he went to war. And he alone with his armor bearer defeated the whole army of the opponent. Only him and his armor bearer defeated everybody because of the strength of the honey. But when the fact that, ah, that somebody had eaten, he was annoyed. He said, Whoever it is, we're going to deal with him. Whoever it is needs to be punished. They said, But well, how will we know? He said, There's no prophet to tell us. Then we will we cast Lord. So what he did, he put himself and his son on one side, the whole of his son on one side, said, we'll know if it is me or if it is them. And when they picked the Lord, it was him and his son. He said, eh, ah, between me and my son, let's cast lost again. That is how accurate it used to be. That is how accurate it used to be. If there is no ministry of the prophet, they cast lots. It was so accurate. It was unbelievably accurate that casting lots can be that accurate. They will just cast lots and they will know who it is. Now, this is a matter of life and death. He wanted to kill the person that did it. Of course, invariably, when they knew it was Jonathan, Jonathan confessed, it was me. I didn't even know my dad said we should know him. But daddy, why did you say that? Because me, the little I had, look at the strength I gained and invariably so repented and that was the end of it. But we're just trying to show Show you how powerful it was in those days, how great it was, the power of casting lots. Let me give you another very interesting example. In Jonah chapter 1, God said to Jonah, go to Nineveh 
And Jonah said, no, I'm not going to Nineveh. The Bible said, went to Tarshish. From Tarshish, he went down to the river. From going down to the river, he went down into the ship. From going down into the ship, he went down into the water. Then from going down into the water, he went down into the, 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 the fish. From there, he went down into the belly of the fish. When you start to disobey God, you start to go down and down and down and down. Okay, okay, laugh at me. I know you say that it's not the God now, but he kept on going down. In Job, that Job chapter 1, it was very interesting. God said, go to Nineveh. The Bible said, no, no, I will go to Tarshish and he paid the fear. If you disobey God's direction and he tells you to go one way you refuse to go, you will pay the fear because God will not pay for what he doesn't, he did not order for. God will not pay for what he did not order for. So it's very important for you to be smart about it and let God do what God will do. But look at this say, so when the, 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 the boat was tumultuous, the ship was checking and all that, they knew somebody is on this ship that should not be there. You see, many a times, if you carry the wrong person with you on the road to destiny, that is how things will be very tumultuous. And they said to themselves, there is somebody here we need to throw away. Who is it? It was a serious decision. There was no prophet on board that we tell them this is the person or that is the person. So in verse 7, you know what they did? And they sent everyone to his fellow. Come, let us cast lots. How would they used to do in those days? If there is no prophet to give them direction, the cast law. So let's cast law that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So the cast lot and the lot fell upon Jonah. Accurate. You see, the preciseness of it could be surprising. Accurate. Old Testament. That is why Solomon the wise in Proverbs verse 16 verse 33 he put it like this. The Lord is cast in the lap but the old disposing thereof is of the Lord. He was trying to say it's not about the, 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 the Lord. No, I mean, you sit down on your lap, you put some straws together, you say, The one I be, you're casting the boy, it is God that you, he's trying to say that many a times you might think it is luck that is working for you, but it's not luck, it's God. It's God. I said sometimes, I said um, some, some, some anonymous miracles happen. It's just God trying to remain quiet behind the say. So he said, the Lord is cast into the lap, but the one disposing thereof is of the Lord. It's the Lord that chooses to walk in that way. It's not that uh, the, 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 the Lord walk. No, no, no. In Proverbs 18, 18, Solomon put it like this. He said, the Lord caused contentions to cease. It's me, it's not you. You are the problem, I'm not the problem. Let's cast Lord. He said, I'm parted between the mighty. That is to say in those days, if two mighty people, you know, Pastor Deji and Pastor Peter, they are part of my staff, they are the very tall guys. If they are this arguing over something, no, it's me that you follow them. It is not you. God told me, I call me Peter, 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 the father of Sean. How many times did I call you? Three times, my Lord. You are the one that we follow, Reverend. And Pastor Deji said, What? Even my wife woke me up and said, God spoke to her. Easy, baby. Make sure your husband is the one that follow her. And the two of them are taller than me. If they start to fight, I can't even separate them. So we say, okay, let's cut his lot. That was how accurate lot was. Once they cast it, they knew what to do. But listen to this. In Acts chapter 1 verse 26, when they were like, okay, Judas is dead now. And the Bible says position, let another take. That is scary. It makes you to realize that is nothing you are doing that your position another can take. Don't count yourself. It without me can happen. It's a lie. Without you, it will happen and happen more. I've seen that over and over again. People that left our ministry, and then when they left, you're like, how will we cope? We have coped. In fact, we normally cope better. That's why we know that it is God that has been using them. It's not them. So look at this in Acts chapter 1. They say, okay, so now his, his, his position, let another take. Who will take his position? Verse 26. Then they gave forth the Lord, and the Lord fell upon Matthias. He was numbered with the 11 apostles. But interestingly, this is the first time Matthias was mentioned. This is the last time. Mm -hmm. In the book of Acts, go read your Bible. From now henceforth, we never heard of Matthias again. It is generally believed that the plan of God was for Paul to take the place of Judas. But this time, even Paul was not saved. But they were in a hurry. They cast lots. 
and it looks as if their lot did not work. They got it wrong. But lot had always worked. What happened here? Because in this dispensation, God had already told them, in this dispensation, my spirit will come. When my spirit comes, it will lead you into all truth. In fact, remember, the way that, that John chapter 16 verse 13 said it, it will hold you by the hand and lead you into all truth, which means you are not meant to be guided by lots any longer. You are meant to be guided by my spirit. And if you do it by lot, you will lose. That is why in this generation, if you follow prophet, you, you choose to find because of a prophet, you will suffer. You choose where to work because of lot, you will pay the consequences. In this generation, we are not led by prophets. We are not led at all by casting lots. We are led. We are, we are led by being led by the Spirit of God. I have so much to say. The time is gone. We'll continue from here next week. I'm sure you've been blessed. Tell all your friends to come back and watch this. And I'm sure they'll be blessed. But don't go away. I want to pray for the rest of your week. I have one or two announcements to make. Don't go anywhere. Wait for me. I'll be back soon.